All right, so today we're going to talk about arrays in Bash. We're going to demystify them. We're going to show the two different types that we have. And we're going to show how to use them, what the syntax looks like. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. So first thing we can do is we can create a new array. How do we do that? We can use declare dash a and then give it the name of the variable we want to declare. The nice thing about Bash is because indexed arrays are assumed to be the default, we actually don't need to do this. We can just say array equals open and close paren. And by doing that, we've created a new array called ARR and it has exactly zero elements in it. So what's the first thing we can do? Well, instead of initializing it to be an empty array, we can actually initialize it to have some stuff in it. Foo, bar, baz. Just like arguments to a command, they get parsed with the exact same logic. So now we have three elements in this array. We can prove that with this gnarly syntax. Don't worry, I'm gonna explain this all later and you're gonna understand why that happens, but you can see that we now have three items in this array. So what can we do? We can index into the array. So we can say array at spot zero is foo, array at spot one is bar, array at spot two is baz, array at spot three is the empty string. There's nothing there, it's completely empty. We can also do, I don't know if you knew this, minus one. We can index it backwards. So other languages have it. I think Python has it. Um, I don't know if JavaScript does or not. Either way, we can index it with like a negative one and we can get the last element of the array. Of course, we can say, you know, negative two, get the second to last, negative three, we'll get the third to last, which in this case is the first element of the array. All right, pretty cool, pretty neat. So what are some other things we can do? Well, let's say we want to loop over the elements of the array. You may have seen syntax like this, and you may have been confused by it because sometimes we seem to use star and sometimes we seem to use the at sign and it seems to yield the same result. So what's going on here? Well, let me show you a different way of representing this data. So we're using echo, which will separate the arguments it gets with a space character. Instead of echo, we can do printf percent s for a string format and then a new line. So now printf will take arguments. I'll just manually give it foobar baz and you can see that it separates them based on new lines. Hey, really cool, right? Let's put little less than and greater thans around it. This is just for formatting. So now we can clearly see there are three elements that we are giving printf. So instead of doing that, what if we give it our array? So let's give it it with the star and see what happens. Well, hey, that looks right, doesn't it? What about the at sign? Okay, uh, that also looks right. What's going on here? Well, they're being word split because we're not quoting our expansion. You should always quote your expansions in Bash. So let's go over here and quote our expansion. What's gonna happen here? We only have one argument. That's kind of weird, right? What happens if we do this? We have three arguments. All right, so what's going on here? Because it seemed like it worked three out of the four times. If you look at this, it worked for the star without quotes, look for the ad sign without quotes, and then it only worked for the ad sign with quotes. So what's going on here? Well, there's a couple things we can do here. Let's illustrate the issue even better. So, foo, bar, baz, bat still have three elements, but one of the elements has a space character in it. So let's go ahead and rerun all of our tests. So we're gonna first print it without quotes around the star, and you can see it thinks we have four elements. So this is wrong. Now we're gonna do the same thing with an at sign. Thinks we have four elements, so this is wrong. Now we're gonna quote the star, it puts it all as one big giant element. Wrong for what we wanna do with it, but we can explain what the star character actually does. And then this one correctly handles it. So you want your quotes, and you want your at sign, this is how you correctly iterate over the elements of an array. This notation, the star, what this actually does is it stringifies it, it joins all the elements together, and the character it uses to join them is your IFS variable. Now you may have seen this variable, maybe a little confusing. Bear with me, I'm gonna explain it all. So let's set the IFS manually, we're gonna set it to a comma, and then we can do something like this. Array, and then we will join it all together. Make sure to quote our expansions, we're being good. And now we have foo, comma, bar, comma, baz, bat. So three elements separated by commas. This is exactly what we want. Now we can unset IFS, which has the effect of sending it back to its default value so we don't mess up any commands possibly in the future. If I were to put this in a script, I would probably wrap it in a subshell. So you could do something like this. And then the open and close paren will run it in its own little environment, so then it won't actually modify the IFS. As you can see, the IFS is not set to a comma here. Uh, so yeah, this is super useful. So here's the cheat sheet, here's the takeaway. At sign, this is for iterating elements. And the star, this is for stringify. You can think of it as array.join of the IFS. That's just a way of thinking about what it actually accomplished.
Let's talk about associative arrays now. You ready for this? Let's unset our array element. Let's create a new one. There's no default way in Bash to create this, so we have to use the declare keyword, and this will create an associative array. Here's the thing. If you're on an older version of Bash, this may not work because associative arrays weren't a thing. You can check if this worked by looking at the exit code of declare. So you could run something like declare dash a array, you know, pipe pipe exit one. And then we can say, oh, we can't continue if we were unable to create an array. Don't ever let me catch you writing code where you look at bash version and you try to do version detection. We use feature detection, not version detection. That's safer, easier, and won't be won't break in the future, really. Uh, so what can we do now that we have this? Well, we can set elements of this array. So we could say foo equals one. We could go back here, set bar equal to two. And then what can we do? Well, we can index into it. So we can look at array spot foo, we get one, we can look at array spot bar, and we get two. Now, like before, we could set a key equal to foo, and we can echo, that uh, was a key. And what's gonna happen here? Bad substitution because I typed it wrong. What's gonna happen here? It doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is because it's interpreting key as a literal string. We don't want that. We want it to interpret it. We want it to actually expand key into foo and then use foo to index into array. So that's how we get around that issue. So what's left? Well, we can talk about what we talked about before, which is this little notation for iterating over the elements of an array. I won't show you all four examples. We don't really need to see them. Just know that when you iterate over the elements of an associative array, you get the values, not the keys. So if you want the keys, you have to put an exclamation mark here. This is typically the indirection notation for variables. When you're dealing with arrays, this gives you the indices. So in an index array, this would give you the numbers of the keys. In the associative array, it will actually give you the string values of the keys themselves. This is useful, so you could write a for loop. You could say for key in array, and then we wanna loop over the key, so let's make sure to do that with the exclamation mark. And then we can just say uh, do value, and we can get the value out of the array by getting the key at spot, or it's, we get array at spot key. There we go, now we have the value. Key equals value, done. And there we go. That's how you loop over an associative array in Bash. And finally, the third topic, nested arrays, multi-dimensional arrays, how to put arrays inside an array in Bash. Uh, you can't.